Fire season, of course, is just starting. The forecast is for higher than normal fire potential in July and August for most of California, Nevada, Oregon, and even into southern Washington. Now, more about that forecast for hurricane season. Vicente Arenas has that. The Atlantic Ocean had been in a period of high activity for hurricanes since 1995, causing more than $360 billion in damage. The main reason for today's forecast for a slower season is the development of the weather phenomenon called El Nino. And El Nino occurs when the water temperature off the Pacific coast of South America becomes abnormally warm. That band of warm water changes wind patterns around the world. Jerry Bell is the government's lead hurricane forecaster. If there's strong wind shear, which is what El Nino produces, that strong change in wind direction and speed with height will either prevent a storm from forming or rip a hurricane apart if it moves into that. Surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean are expected to be cooler and rob storms of the energy they need to become hurricanes. But NOAA Administrator Catherine Sullivan warned it's hard to predict the strength of the storms that do reach the U.S. As we saw with Sandy in 2012 and with Hurricane Andrew back in 1992, it only takes one destructive storm to make for a very bad season on the ground in our communities. A new warning system will be available this year to alert coastal residents about storm surge. This map is an example of what an alert could look like in South Florida. The colors indicate how high a surge could rise. The warning will be updated at least every six hours. And here in the Fort Lauderdale area, waves caused by storm surge from Hurricane Sandy in 2012 wiped out two lanes of a highway. And Scott, we should caution that these government predictions have only been right about half the time. Last year, they predicted that there would be 11 hurricanes. There were just two. Vicente, thank you very much.